Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to our read aloud for Thursday, April 30th. And we just began The Chocolate Touch, written by Patrick Skeen Catling. We actually only got through the first chapter yesterday. And we met some characters, Mr. and Mrs. Midas, their son, John Midas, who loves anything sweet, most especially chocolate. And he also has a sister, Mary. We know that his teacher's name is Miss Plimsoll, but that's really all we've learned so far. We didn't really get into the story, just kind of an introduction to who's going to be in the story and a little bit about what John is like. So let's continue. Chapter two. It was Sunday afternoon. The sun was sinking low in the sky, but the air was still quite warm. John was wandering along in the direction of Susan's house, absentmindedly looking down at the sidewalk when his eye was suddenly caught by a dully gleaming silvery gray coin lying right in his path. The coin was the size of about a quarter, but even as he leaned forward eagerly to pick it up, John noticed there was something strange about it. It did not have a picture of George Washington on it or a picture of an eagle. On one side, there was a picture of a chubby boy. And on the other side, there were the letters J-M, which was funny, John thought. Hmm, those letters happened to be his initials. Grasping the coin firmly, he ran on towards Susan's house. She liked to collect things. He thought she might be interested to know that he had the beginning of a coin collection. Although he was in the habit of going over to Susan's by the same route once or twice almost every day, this afternoon, John found himself turning left when he would have normally turned right. I wonder where he's going. I always go the same way, he thought. This time for a change, I'm going to go a new way. He didn't stop to consider that you cannot go east by going west unless you go all the way around the world. Only two blocks along the unfamiliar street, John came to a small corner store. It was a neat red brick building with two big show windows. They were full of all sorts of candy. Susan was immediately absolutely forgotten about. John pressed his nose against the glass. He was imagining the taste of the chocolate covered almonds and chocolate fudge on the other side of the glass. When he noticed a man in a white apron standing behind the counter and beckoning to him. John was surprised. He hadn't expected the store to be open on a Sunday. Don't just stand there in the doorway, John, the man called hardly. Come on in. Get some fresh, sweet, creamy chocolate. There's a special sale today. Wait a minute. How did the man know his name? John wondered. He couldn't remember ever having seen this store before let alone meet the storekeeper. The storekeeper saw John hesitate. The chocolate I use in my kitchen comes direct from the heart of Africa, he said. I use none but the finest ingredients and my recipes. Well, I bet you've never had chocolates like mine before. Come on in, John. Well, thank you, John replied, walking to the counter. But you see, the trouble is, well, no money. The storekeeper asked. No money whatsoever. What have you got there in your right hand? John had forgotten the old coin that he had picked up. Oh, this is part of my coin collection. I'm going to save this coin and then get some more to make a collection. Let me have a look at it, the storekeeper said. He looked briefly at the coin. Hmm. Aha, he exclaimed. Well, is it any good? John asked, his hopes suddenly rising. Oh, it's very good, said the storekeeper. In fact, it's the only kind of money I accept. Oh, but I don't suppose you'd want to spend it on a whole box. A, a whole box? Oh, yes, I imagine you'd rather keep this, you know, for your coin collection than to buy a box of chocolate. Wouldn't you? Oh, no, John said. Chocolate any day. Okay, well, go ahead, then help yourself, the storekeeper said, pointing to a heavily laden show table 
that was piled high with large cellophane wrapped candy boxes, all looking exactly alike. You mean I can have one of those? John asked. His eyes were round with surprise. The candy boxes were as big as the ones his father always brought home on the holidays. Just help yourself, the storekeeper assured him. That is, oh, unless you think it might be better to ask your mother first. Oh, she wouldn't mind, John said hastily, and then blushed. The storekeeper winked knowingly. No, I'm sure she won't, he agreed. Not in the long run, anyway. John tucked one of the large boxes under his arm, declined the storekeeper's offer to wrap it as a gift, thanked him, and hurried out of the store before there could be any question of anyone changing his mind. The storekeeper smiled as he watched his customer hurrying down the street. John decided that it might be sensible to enter his house quietly through the kitchen. With the large candy box hidden behind him, he let himself in through the back door, crept up the kitchen stairway, on tiptoe of course, toward his room which was on the top floor. Just as he was about to round the corner on the second floor to continue his way upstairs, he had to stop for a moment while his father walked by. Oh, that was Mrs. Buttercup on the phone, Mr. Midas called to Mrs. Midas. She said she was sorry that John hadn't been able to get over to play with Susan this afternoon. But it was a good thing in a way, she thought, because Susan's already so excited about her birthday party tomorrow. Hmm, I wonder where John went to instead of Susan's. As soon as the second floor was quiet again, John knew there was no danger that his candy box would be seen. He hurried silently up to his bedroom, pushed open the door, and slid the box under the bed. Then he walked heavily down to the living room. Oh, there you are, said Mrs. Midas. We couldn't imagine where you had been. What have you been doing, John? Oh, just sort of playing around, John said. John usually took a long time to put his things away and get changed and bathe and get ready for bed. For he thought sleeping was a waste of time. But this evening, oh, he started yawning way earlier than usual before bedtime. Oh, um, oh, sleepy, he announced. All right, said Mrs. Midas. You'd better get to bed then. Time for your tonic, in other words, vitamins. John's tonic came in a bottle. It had been prescribed by Dr. Cranium. John had to drink a big spoonful every night to make up for all the vegetables and fruit that he was not eating during the day. The tonic tasted like soap, mud, glue, ink, and paint. Ugh, it tasted horrible. Much to Mrs. Midas' surprise, John ran ahead of her to the dining room cupboard where the vitamins were and the spoon was kept. By the time she got there, he already filled the spoon. Then without any coaxing or arguing, he took it right away with no problem. Oh, John sputtered. Whoa. That's a very good boy, Mrs. Midas said. Now, why can't you just be sensible and eat up your nice dinner and lunches during the day? If you'd only stop eating so much candy, John, and eat your meals properly, you wouldn't need to take this tonic. Soon John was scrubbed and in his pajamas and in bed, ready to be tucked in for the night. Mrs. Midas sat on the bed and stroked his forehead for a moment. Then she leaned forward and kissed his cheek. John, of course, pretending that he was very sleepy, shut his eyes and began deeping, um, <laughs> deeping, oh my gosh, I can't talk, boys and girls, sorry. He began breathing deeply. When Mrs. Midas rejoined Mr. Midas in the living room, she said, you know, I've never known John to be so good about going to bed before, and he went to sleep in no time. A few seconds after the bedroom door had closed behind his mother, John got up out of bed, leaped to the floor, got down on his hands and knees, and felt under his bed for the candy box. He soon had it on the pillow and set to work unfastening it. First, he took off the thin outer sheet of cellophane. Cellophane's like a clear plastic. Then he lifted off the lid. Then he removed a sheet of cardboard. Then he pulled off a square of heavy tin foil. And then he took out a layer of shredded paper. Wow, 
There are lots of parts just to get to this candy. As the wrappings piled up around him, John became rather anxious. At last he came to a small central ball of cotton batting. And there, right in the middle, was a little golden ball. He picked at the ball with his fingernail and peeled away the gold paper, revealing a tiny piece of plain chocolate. Would you believe, boys and girls, it was the only piece of chocolate in that whole box that he bought. <sighs> now, deeply disappointed, John nevertheless put the candy in his mouth. You know he can't turn down chocolate. He had never tasted a chocolate quite like it. It was the most chocolatey chocolate he had ever encountered. And that is the end of chapter two. Tune in tomorrow for more of the talk, <laughs> more of the chocolate touch when we read chapter three. Have a super day, everybody. Bye for now.